Welcome to the Nonfiction Writers Podcasting in a Great Way. I'm Ryan Aber, joined by Jason Kersey, and special guest today from the Tulsa World and former Oklahoman uh, employee, Kelly Hines. Kelly, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are y'all? We're doing great. Uh, Kelly, this, this week, uh, a big game, uh, especially from the, the Tulsa side, also uh, for OU, but uh, Tulsa with a, a really big win uh, last week in overtime against Tulane. What was your, your main takeaway from, from that game? Well, I would say just looking back at how TU played last year, there were quite a few games that kind of started the way that the game against Tulane started. You know, they got in a hole, had some just, um, you know, a couple missed field goals, just some some mistakes that really um, cost them early. They were down 14-0, and that was the type of game that last year they just would have folded and, and just not been able to come back from that. They never led the entire game until um, – the winning touchdown in double overtime. And so I was kind of just impressed with their resolve. Um, You know, they have quite a few young players still, but they kind of just stuck it out, um, kept fighting, and, you know, didn't play especially well, but they, you know, obviously did enough to win. Uh, Kelly, last year when when Dane Evans came in, he he was pretty bad, and it looks like he's improved a lot. What have you seen from him just in the first game and and through, through camp? You know, he has shown a lot of poise, especially, um, you know, on the, the fourth quarter tying drive um, with just a few minutes left against Tulane. That was a type of drive that, you know, just for most quarterbacks, that would be difficult to march down the field, um, you know, through a touchdown pass on fourth down and then um, had a two-point conversion pass that was just perfectly thrown. Um, so that was incredibly impressive. He just, um, you know, he's grown up a lot. Um, last year when he was put in, he was trying to play in place of someone who was a totally different style quarterback than he is. And so, um, you know, in the offseason, they really tailored the offense to fit Dane more. And um, they just put him in better situations. And, you know, he still he made a few bad throws, had two interceptions that, um, you know, were just bad throws against Tulane. But for the most part, um, you know, he was very sharp with his passes and um, really just made good decisions. And then one of uh, uh, Evan's biggest targets this year, is it Kiaris? Is that how you pronounce his first name? Kiaris. Kiaris Garrett. Uh, he was a guy who was, was hurt uh, a lot of last year, wasn't available as a target. How much does he change the dynamic uh, for Tulsa's passing game? I think he changes it. Um, I think it's just huge having him back out there. You know, he was hurt at the end of the, their second game of the year, and um, you know, they really, the offense really struggled without him out there because, you know, he's obviously like, he's a big target. He's 6'4, 220 pounds, um, like 40 inch vertical, just like a, a freak type athlete. And, you know, having him out there, especially as a down the field target, he, he just, he's a big time playmaker. But then whenever he's out there, um, you know, defense really has to, um, you know, keep an eye on him. They're, they're just on him constantly. And so if, defenses are focusing on him like Tulane did on Thursday that opens up other guys like even Lucas who's a guy who you know flanker receiver um great hands and you know it just it opens up things um a, a lot more um you know last year they didn't have a whole lot of options um Jordan James is really um by far their number one receiver after Kiaris got hurt and so um you know Jordan James has graduated now but they have quite a few um young receivers who, um, you know, if, if Kiaris is covered, they can go somewhere else. And it seems like that's going to be a big key this weekend with whether it's Kiaris or their other receivers is being able to move the ball through the air with OU's uh, front seven as as strong as they are. And it seems like their one weakness defensively is to be able to, to beat them downfield. Yeah, I think so. Um, you know, I, with OU's front seven being what it is, um, that's going to be a huge huge challenge for um, to use offensive line, which they have a lot of experience there, and um, they're, you know, working to build some depth. But, um, you know, the one thing with Dane is, uh, you know, his, his down-the-field passes, um, you know, he tends to kind of float them a little bit. Um, that's what he did. Um, he had, you know, one bad interception last week that really, if he had just delivered it a little bit better, it would have been a touchdown instead of an interception in the end zone. So, you know, I think um, – if, if the offensive line can kind of keep some pressure off Dane, um, 
and he can uh, put a little bit more zip on his deep passes. I don't know. I, I mean, I, I still think OU is, is heavily favored and, and probably won't be in much danger, but Dane can make some pretty good throws. Uh, Tulsa uses two running backs, you know, Flanders and Dickerson. James Flanders is uh, one of Ryan and my favorite people in, in favorite athletes. I think so James of us Flanders' have their family cover. is one of my, is, <laughs> as a group, are, are some of my favorite people in and, the world. And uh, but but anyway, what do each of those guys bring to the table? You know, James is more of a um, you know consistent, reliable. Um, he doesn't make just incredible big plays, but he's someone you can count on. He's not going to fumble. Um, He's he's just very reliable, and um, you know before the se- he came into the season with I think two career carries. They just didn't rely on um, him much in the past because they had someone like Trey Watts, Jatari, and Douglas. So um, you know Savari and Dickerson is a really interesting guy. They um, picked up as a JUCO transfer, and um, you know he has more of that um, explosiveness. Um, you know he. He has a lot of breakaway speed, um, so he's he's pretty dangerous um, for other teams. Like if if he gets past you know a certain distance, like he's just going to be gone. Um, he's very difficult to catch for most teams. Oh, you obviously have more speed on defense than you will typically face. But um, you know Dickerson looked pretty good in his debut last week. Um, he had a, a touchdown that was actually called back um, because of. Uh, offensive pass interference that was he just made an incredible play um you know after he pushed uh the defender down but um he uh i think averaged 6.5 yards per carry last week so i mean that's what they're looking for from him he just has more of that um explosiveness how much have you uh gotten to talk to james this this uh since you've been on the tu beat and is he still uh is he still a pretty friendly guy we we like i said we both uh had great experiences with him. Yeah, he's definitely, you know, some of the personality of the team. He actually was um, banged up for uh, quite a bit of the preseason, so I didn't get to talk to him as much as I probably would have. And, you know, they've they've just kind of had um, really running back was the only position where they had many um, injuries. And at one point their top three running backs were being held out of practice, and um, they had this uh, 5'9 uh, local kid, um, D'Angelo Brewer, who – uh, really during that time just came out of nowhere um, and uh, really like worked his way onto the depth chart. And he actually um, he played a little bit last week. I don't know if he'll play much this week. And then uh, moving to the other side, Kelly, the, yesterday at Bob Stoops', Stoops press conference, he was asked about uh, TU secondary, uh, especially, um, especially DeMarco Nelson and, and the safeties. Uh, what is it about that group that, that makes them uh, so solid, and, and how big of a boost has having Nelson back uh, been for Tulsa's defense? Yeah, I would say safety is probably their strongest position, but they didn't really look that against Tulane. Um, you know, DeMarco Nelson, he's, um, in terms of career starts, um, you know, TU believes that he's the most experienced defensive back in college football. And, you know, he missed all of last year because of academic ineligibility. And, um, you know, he's back, and he was very much, you know, excited to be back out on the field on Thursday. But he admittedly was very slow in reacting on plays, had quite a few missed tackles. Just didn't look like the DeMarco Nelson that, you know, they had seen, you know, two years earlier when he was a freshman All-American. Um, so, you know, they're trying to get that rust knocked off him because he – He's an incredible playmaker. I mean, he's probably, in terms of just um, skill, probably the m- most talented player on this TU team, but he did not really show that last week. He did obviously have the game stealing interception, <laughs> but other than that, he was not really himself. But the other safety is Michael Muto, who, um, you know, he was fourth in the nation in tackles last year, just a very solid player. He um, didn't really play that great either on Thursday, but typically he's a uh, playmaker. I mean, he's very reliable. Those two together in tandem, you know, they really should be one of the best um, safety duos in the country. But, um, you know, as I said, they didn't really look at last week. Uh, you know, Dalton Rodriguez is such an interesting guy. He was committed to OU, flipped to Tulsa. Now he's apparently walked on at OU, although he's not on the roster yet, and I don't think any of us really know what's going on there. 
What, what sort of happened? What, from your understanding, what happened with him in Tulsa? You know, I'm not really sure. There's, it seems to be a little bit of a, um, you know, two sides of the story. Um, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Bill Blankenship had said that he, you know, this is before I got on the beat, so I'm not sure all of the details, but, you know, he it just was announced, you know, we've dismissed him for, I think it was, I don't know what they say here, violation of team rules or something to that effect. But I think there's a little bit um, of a debate as to what happened because, I, I think Dalton Rodriguez's family kind of disagreed with, with what went down. So I'm not really sure what happened, but it was very, you know, strange uh, the way all of it went down. And, uh, Kelly, looking at the, the Tulsa depth chart, we see a, a lot of guys that people who follow high school football around the state uh, are, are very familiar with, you know, Garrett Glad, Rob Boyd. Blake Belcher, uh, James Flanders, uh, a lot of them on the defensive side as well. As you've talked to some of the the local kids this week, what was uh, what's their feeling like uh, entering a game against OU? I know a, a lot of the the TU guys, not all of them, but uh, I know a lot of them carry a little bit of chip on their shoulder uh, in regards to OU as far as recruiting goes. Yeah, I think um, that'll probably be the case. Um, you know, uh, we haven't had availability yet for this week. I'm about to go to that now. So, you know, that's something I'm going to ask those guys about because a lot of them, you know, they they grew up watching. I mean, they have 56 players from Oklahoma on their roster, and that doesn't include someone like Dane Evans who grew up in Oklahoma and moved to Texas. So, you know, they have quite a few guys who grew up watching OU um, and – probably dreamed of playing there and didn't get recruited by, you know, a school of that caliber. And so they come to a place like Tulsa, which, you know, Tulsa's the smallest FBS school, only like 3,000 some kids. Um, You know, it's just a a completely different experience. And I think um, they're probably going to say that they're excited about the opportunity, which obviously is the right thing to say. But, you know, it's not very often a, a top five team comes into your own stadium you know I think there'll probably be quite a few OU fans here um, and it's, it's kind of been a struggle for TU to fill their stadium anyway so I think this is one of those games that you know if you're a kid from Oklahoma um, you know you've been looking forward to just having that shot because you know you look at uh, some of the big upsets in college football in the past 10 years like you see that it can happen. It doesn't happen very often um, for like a 25 point underdog to, to knock off a top five team. But, you know, I, I think that they get fired up, you know, probably more so for this game than they do others on their schedule. Because, I mean, let's be real, like they, they play teams like Texas State and, you know, ones that, that are probably as easy to get fired up for. And then, uh, also, one of the, those local kids uh, for Tulsa is defensive end Derek Alexander, who who has a, a brother who's playing linebacker for OU. the The Alexander family obviously has had a, a great uh, great output of football players. But what do you think it's like for for those guys going head to head? And I know uh, their their dad. It's a little little tough for him to get him in uh, crimson and cream. Yeah, I'm actually going to ask Derek about, um, you know, this this game coming up. Um, he's, uh, you know, one of the leaders of this defense. He's he's very skilled, and, um, you know, one thing about him that I've noticed, I can't say that I know him extremely well, but he doesn't get too um, emotional. I think he's very much an even-keeled guy, very reserved. So I'm kind of interested to see what he'll say, if he'll say, you know, that he can't wait to play against um, you know, his brother's team or if he's going to be like, oh, it's another game. Because I think that's what these kids like often say, oh, it's just another game <laughs> when you know deep down it's more than that. Absolutely. Um, you know, last thing, Kelly. You know, you you spent a couple of years on the OSU beat, and I know that can't. That's sometimes not the easiest. Uh, j- Mike Gundy doesn't make that the easiest job in the world <laughs> for you guys. But now you're at a place where Bill Blankenship is pretty much wide open, and you you. I, I just wonder if you could talk about the difference between covering uh, a program like Oklahoma State and then uh, a program like Tulsa. It's really night and day. Um, I think the biggest difference is, um, you know, TU understands um, how it kind of fits into um, our coverage at the Tulsa World. I mean, we have OU, we have OSU, and we have TU. And, um, you know, it's it's 
uh, there are only so many um, places in the paper for teams to go. You know, we can't have um, – We I think we do a really good job of, of making it as even as possible, but I think, um, you know, TU sometimes uh, doesn't get the same attention, um, same placement in the paper. And, you know, I think TU really understands um, that, and, um, you know, they go out of their way to accommodate me, to accommodate the other media – and, um, you know, they just they, they make it as easy as possible on us. And, and I think because um, they understand that they need us. And I think that's the biggest difference with um, OSU and probably OU also. They, yeah. I, I think that those schools don't understand, um, you know, this, this, these are our jobs. We're not just doing this for fun. Like, I think when you understand where both sides are coming from, it's a better relationship. And um, I, I think OSU and OU probably don't. Um, think that they need the media as much as they really do. Um, so that's the one thing about TU. You know, I get to watch practice. I, um, you know, if I need to talk to any given player at any given moment, they would be accommodating to me. Um, you know, I try to keep it to availability sessions and all of that. But um, they really just kind of get it, and their um, SID is probably the best I've ever dealt with. Wow, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that must be nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Kelly, we know you have to, to get and get some things uh, done today, but uh, thank you so much for joining us. No problem, guys. We'll thanks, uh, look forward to seeing you Saturday morning. All right, sounds good. All right, thanks, Kelly. All right, that's it for the Nonfiction Writers Podcasting in a Great Way. Jason Kersey, joined by Kelly Hines from the Tulsa World. I'm Ryan Aber. Join us ne- later this week as we uh, once again preview OU Tulsa scheduled for Saturday morning, 11 o'clock at uh, Chapman Stadium in Tulsa. Check out newsok.com and the Oklahoma and every day for the best OU coverage anywhere.